Thank you. I, I'm, I'm honored to be here, to be part of this event, and to be able to share some of uh, my stories and what I, what I have done and what I'm doing in the uh, film industry. Uh, I started this career in Monterey, California, back in 1990. Uh, I was hired as a cameraman, a slash reporter, slash editor, slash everything. It was a very small uh, television station, low budget television station, and my boss said, you have to pay your dues. And I did for two years. I learned a little bit of uh, the television business, and eventually I moved to uh, El Paso, Texas, where I work as a reporter slash cameraman for two years again. And that's where I had uh, my first hand into the immigration thing. Uh, being uh, El Paso is a border city, city with uh, Juarez, uh, Juarez, Mexico, and the majority of the uh, daily news are related to immigration, uh, drug trafficking, violence, and all the stuff that goes on in the border cities. Uh, it was it was an, uh, an amazing experience for me uh, working in, in, in this uh, in this news business in Mexico and in Juarez. And then after El Paso, I moved to different cities. I went to uh, Dallas, uh, Chicago, and then I got to be sent out to different countries to cover bigger news events. Central South America, Europe, the Middle East. And everything was going great until I, I was transferred to Phoenix, Arizona, uh, in the capacity of a news director uh, for, for the Telemundo, a Spanish network, uh, in Phoenix and Tucson, Arizona. And also I was a uh, news reporter for uh, the uh, Telemundo Network News that comes out of Miami. The, both, both of the uh, main television, uh, television, Spanish television networks in the United States are based in Miami, Univision and, Tele, uh, and Telemundo, as NBC, ABC, and all of them are based in New York City. And that's where everything changed, and it changed my life. Because I used to do a lot of, uh, a lot of stories about uh, human trafficking, uh, about people trying to come to the United States for a better life. I used to do a lot of uh, ride-alongs with the Border Patrol, trying to do my minute and a half or two minutes story for the network news. And you know, when you're a reporter, two minutes is a lot, according to the producers. And sometimes they call you and say, you need to cut it off to one, one, one and a half. And you have to be able to tell a story in a minute and a half. And you know, there was a lot to say about people trying to cross to the United States from Mexico, Central, South America, and many other countries. I ran into many stories. Stories that, you know, really changed my life. I saw many people who died in the desert. I ran into, I encountered groups of migrants lost for days in the desert with no water, with no food, their feet bleeding, they were about to die, and some of them died literally in front of my eyes and in front of the Border Patrol eye, eyes because I, in the majority of those trips, uh, I was with Border Patrol agents that are trying to, to catch people, and I was trying to, to film them. I was trying to do my story. Uh, it, it, was, it, it was very sad to see how human traffickers, human smugglers, uh, profit from people's dreams, from people's hopes, and from people's misery. It was very sad to know that when they, they, they pay these people to bring them to the States, and they leave them behind sometimes. When, they can, when, when migrants cannot continue walking, they leave them behind. They rape women, sometimes they rape men too. And for them, it's just, they're just human cargo. And in a in minute and a half or two minutes of story, it was not enough to tell the world, our Spanish audience in the United States, even though it's a big uh, Spanish audience, we share uh, Telemundo, the station that I was working, the network that I was working for at that time, so about two and a half, three million viewers. And the news are like, People are watching news at home and they are doing something else. They're cooking, chasing a kid, or doing something. And you know, sometimes they, they get to watch half of the story. And by the next day, they forget about it. So I said, I need to do something more than just a minute and a half or two minute story. 
something that, that could create a bigger impact to, uh, on people's life. It was, it was unacceptable for me to know that 200, 200 people, 300 people, even 500 people were dying in the Arizona desert every year. Even more, according to some of the uh, pro, uh, immigrants organizations in, in the part of the country. And I said, I need to do something more than just that. It is it's unacceptable that these people are dying in the most powerful country of the world, and nobody cares. But I said, well, I want to make a movie, I want to make a documentary, but I don't know about filmmaking. You know, I had the big problem at the moment. I said, well, I want to try to do something different. And I, I moved to New York City to pursue uh, my filmmaking career. And I attended a filmmaking academy, the New York Film, uh, New York Film Academy, and I started preparing my first uh, screenplay. It's called Siete Soles. Siete Soles is a, uh, it's a feature film. It's a fiction based on true events. Uh, and it's a recap of some of the most impacting stories that I, that I saw while working uh, as a news reporter. Some of the people, a great majority of people that I have uh, uh, seen watching my movie cry when they see it. It was so impacting that, and, and so dramatic the, uh, that Hollywood distributed companies didn't want to pick it up because they said, we want, we want films that make money. We want films that uh, people can enjoy, they can laugh about it, and that they can forget about the problems they have. And I, I was, I'm the wrong business then because I want to make people to be aware of these social problems. It, you know, it was not, a, it, it was not an easy to make the transition from uh, being a news reporter to a filmmaker. As a news reporter, I was making a living. As a filmmaker, I'm still in debt. <laughs> you know, but uh, I said I need, to, I need to put my five cents somehow on this, on this issue. I need to make people aware of the problems that we have. And, and I sacrificed, I, I gave up my career. Since uh, 2005, at the end of 2005, that I, uh, that I left my, the television business career, I've been working on, on films and documentaries and not making money, but I'm happier than ever before because I'm contributing with this cause. Siete Soles was an official selection in 12 international film festivals. I got to travel the world and tell the people this is going on. Not only in the United States, it is happening in Mexico, it's happening in Spain, it's happening in many other countries. My, my movie was, um, ha had the uh, world premiere in Malaga, Spain. It's, a border, uh, it's, a, it's on the uh, uh, coast of uh, the Mediterranean. And they were like so familiar with this issue because they see those uh, African migrants trying to get to Spain and many of them die. And many of them pay thousands of, uh, thousands of dollars to human smugglers to bring them, uh, uh, to take them to, to Spain. And everyone is trying to get to a better place, a place where they can have a better life. Uh, you know, many migrants stayed in Mexico and Central America, uh, migrants from Asia, uh, Eastern European countries, uh, they try to go to uh, Europe as well. It is a global problem. And I say, I need to uh, dedicate more time, I need to make people more aware of this problem. Just put in my, my five cents. Uh, like I said, Siete Soles was released in, 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 in theaters in Mexico. It was released in selected theaters in the United States. And it's been, it's in all over Latin America and many other places, many other places, the, the pirate version. I've been, uh, I've been, uh, have been emailed from Peru, Ecuador. They, they bought it on the, the streets. You know, we can't compete with that, but as long as people see it, uh, I'm happy with that. After Siete Soles, I said I need to expand my vision from the border of U.S. and Mexico because I have here about what Central American migrants go through by trying to get to the United States. And many people say, well, coming to the United States illegally, it might be tough for these people. But a lot of people have no idea that crossing Mexico or crossing the border between Mexico and Guatemala is like living in hell. Is living in hell for the Central American migrants, and uh, I said I need to do that. And th for these people, uh, in order to get to the U.S., they need to cross Mexico on a roof of cargo trains. This train is known as the Beast or La Bestia. They, it's also known as the tra Train of Death, El Tren de la Muerte. So I, I said I. Uh, uh, I need to do it. People told me you're crazy. You're going to get killed. You know, it's just like a committing suicide. And uh, 
I, I, I did a journey with these people. I spent almost two years. I followed these people from the beginning to the end. And uh, I, I ended up with, uh, with a documentary that is, was recently released. And I have gotten great feedback. But the most important is just I'm taking a message. I'm, I'm, I, t I have a message in my hand to, 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 to pass along to people. I said, this is going on. We need to do something. We need to do something. And, and people told me in the, uh, when I met people on the, on the border, uh, in the Arizona desert, I, I used to ask them, why do you do it? Why do you come? I mean, don't you know that you can die? So well, we're dying in our, in our hometowns. We, need to, we know there are jobs for us. We know there are jobs that people don't want to do, and we want to do it. And, and I said, well, well, you're risking your life. I prefer to risk my life by trying than just staying in my home place. As long as there's a need of a job, I'm going to go and do it, because I have, n I have no chances to improve my life in my home country, in my hometown. I, uh, I remember I saw a 22-year-old Polish man who died in the desert. I was shocked. How did he get from Poland to Nogales, Sonora, Mexico, and eventually to Arizona? He died as well. So there are people from all over the world trying desperately to uh, improve their lives, and they know that we have the jobs from them, and they know there are human smugglers that are willing to take their money you know, for their dreams, for their hopes. I see the clock, and I have uh, no more than uh, five minutes, so I'm going to share with you the trailer of my last documentary, The Beast. This is about two and a half minutes. It's a documentary that I, that I shot myself. I live as a migrant with them on the roof of the trains. I followed these people for almost two years, uh, and I went through a, a lot of stuff, including being uh, incarcerated uh, and, and uh, assaulted and you know many other things. But this is a documentary that I, that I, that I shot, that I wrote, and it's already out there in the stores, and it's, it's a strong message for people to uh, be more conscious about this uh, uh, human trafficking and immigration problem. Let's, uh, let's see it. Aquí tal vez tendríamos que escribir como Dante, aquí empieza el infierno. Cuando vengo en el camino, por las noches, yo le oraba a Dios y le digo, Dios mío, guárdame. Cuídame, Señor, porque yo no quiero perecer en este camino. Este camino es bien arriesgado. No me voy a morir sin, no, sin ni ir allá. Tengo que ir. Una bestia asesina que un ratito puedes estar arriba y al rato ya estás sin una pierna. Ese es un demonio, es un demonio el tren, es traicionero. Ese tren ha cobrado miles de vidas humanas, pero muchos no entendemos.
Thank you. Well, this is the beast, and this happens in Mexico. All these people are trying to come to the United States. Their, uh, uh, their challenge is to cross Mexico. A lot of people don't know this. But in Me Mexico, they go through hell. When they get to the Mexico-U.S. border, even though they are still in Mexican territory, they say, wow, we made it. We crossed Mexico. But things have changed in the last few months, in the last year and a half or so. The, uh, Mexican, uh, or the uh, Mexican cartels in the north of Mexico, they are kidnapping and killing these people. Last August, they killed 74 Central, America, Central and South American migrants. They kidnapped them. They want them to become snipers for, for them, for the cartels, and since they refuse to, they kill them all in a massive way. I'm sure you have heard the news. They put them all in a house, in a, inside a house, they tied them up from their hands, and they shot them, men and women. That was just very recent, and about a couple months ago, uh, 50 other migrants were uh, kidnapped. So now the danger is not on the south of the border, it's in the north of the border as well. Uh, it's, it's a tough journey for them, and it's a big problem in Mexico, as it is as a big problem in the United States. However, my films are not about if you agree or disagree with the immigration problem. My films are about human beings. It's about human rights. My films is about respecting people's rights and preserving people's life. That's, that's what I'm trying to get, that's the message I'm trying to get with my films. Um, working in the pre-production of a new documentary in Mexico, and I was already on an offer to do uh, a movie, not putting my money, somebody else's money, I hope I, I can get it finally, uh, about the Dream Act. I'm sure you have heard about the Dream Act, and I'm already writing the screenplay for that, uh, that film. I hope it'll, it'll come out in, in a year and a half or so, and then I'll take the 30 seconds I have left to make a commercial. You can buy my films online. You can buy them pretty much in any uh, video stores in the country. Uh, Walmart, Best Buy, Barnes & Noble, Hollywood Video, all those uh, whatever Hollywood videos left or blockbusters. Uh, you can find them there. You can also get them uh, through, uh, through Netflix. And if you have any questions, any, any story related to, to this, uh, this issue, I'll be more than happy to uh, during the break or at the end. Thank you so much, and congratulations for a wonderful program.